God bless you, saints. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Like that song says, I woke up this morning feeling fine. I woke up with heaven on my mind. <clears throat> We've been studying on uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and the whole book of Hebrews, and we about made it to about made it halfway through uh, chapter 6. So we'll see if we can if we can finish today. Lord Jesus, we just ask you, Lord, to bless the reading of your word and our study this morning. Bless Brother Wade as he's studying, preparing back there, Lord. And we look, we ask, Lord, that you'll just answer every need this, this morning, Lord, as we come expecting. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 6, and really Hebrews chapter 6 is talking about anointed ones and those that uh, turn back and, and begin to strike at the word. Um, and so Hebrews chapter 6 says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it and bringeth forth herbs meat for them by whom it is dressed receiveth blessing from God. But, but that which beareth thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, whose end is to be burned. <clears throat> so Paul's talking about, he's laying out a, a scene that we can, uh, if you just kind of picture that in your mind of, of rain falling on the earth and, and, um, and, it, and it brings up different kinds of seeds that have been planted. It, uh, all the different kinds of seeds benefit thorns and briars and then the true seed that's been planted. But, uh, it, the ones that have, the, 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 you're going to have some that 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 actually come to church and, and benefit with the of the Holy Ghost falling on the people and and they they taste of the word and they 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 benefit from it and they, but yet there's there's they they don't continue on to the Holy Ghost. So if you if you fall away from that, if you turn back and begin to strike back at it and say. Brother Branham's not right, and the, the, the messenger from the for the day is not right, and those kind of things. How can you, how can you, you actually are crucifying God afresh by, refer, by rejecting the word for your day? So how, how can, uh, if, how can you be if you fall away to renew them again? It would be impossible to renew them again to repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the very thing you're crucifying, the very thing that would save you, and put him to an open shame. So Brother Brown, in the message anointed ones, he talked about, you know, both, both, you got rain falling on all these different kinds of people, both partake of the same nourishment, water and sun, both prayed. Now, you think about that, both prayed, both like, like Balaam, all these examples in, in the Bible, Balaam had all the different set sacrifices. He was, he was, it looked like he was doing the same thing. Cain looked like he was a, a good religious person. Both partook of the same nourishment, water and sun. Both prayed. Both received help from God. For he maketh his sun and rain to fall on both good and evil. And though they both had the same wonderful blessing, and both had the same wonderful manifestations, there was still that one great difference. They were of different seed. So the seed is what makes the difference. And, and, and in Matthew chapter 13, we, last time we kind of looked at that parable of the sower that that the, the word is sown and, and, and received in different ways. The, the sun will burn it out and, you know, somebody will, the, the, all the cares of life will choke it out. And, uh, but if you just hang on to that word and receive it in good ground, ground that sometimes is, uh, God will get you to a, to a spot where you get, that, uh, you get uh, take, he'll take you to a valley where you, you a, a, a valley of desperation where you begin to realize that something's got to take place in my life. I'm tired of the situation that I'm at. So Jesus is saying that he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. And understanding doesn't necessarily mean just with your intellectual mind, but understanding, this kind of understanding, I believe, comes from, from actually a relationship with Jesus Christ where he reveals to you what the word is speaking. And you don't read it, the word necessarily like a newspaper anymore, but you're reading it like a love letter where you read between the lines where you read the story of Abraham and Sarah and it, it, you, you begin to read between the lines and see that how that their body was changed back and you begin to read between the lines and you begin to understand that all all the, all these all these mysteries that are that are laying there in the Bible but you begin to get the sense of it 
the essence of what the gospel is. And how can you get the essence of it unless you have a relationship with Christ? Christ is our absolute. He's the one that we're our rock and our foundation. And he's the one, if you've, got, if you've got the author of the Bible in you, he will give you the understanding and give you the sense of what you're reading. Amen. So you see, see, the difference is the seed. The difference is the seed, the revelation of what the Bible is about. The revelation. And, and the revelation comes by receiving that word and hanging on to it till God can make it manifest in your life. <clears throat> so Brother Brown would say, uh, or, or actually, this, <laughs> this is the Bible. Jesus, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everybody that goes to church and casts out devils and preaches the gospel. Not everybody. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And the will is the word, which means the word is that seed. So he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And the will, now, now see, if you're walking in the word and you're doing the will of the Father, then that means that your, your life begins to match up. Right. See how it's all tied together with if you have a revelation, then acts, your works will begin to follow. Right. You're gonna go to church, you're gonna pay your tithes, you're gonna do the things that are required, you're gonna be baptized the right way, you're gonna outwardly demonstrate the faith that's on the inside that you have received because the word is becoming real to you. So he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will prophesy, profess unto them, I never knew you. I never have a relationship with you. I, 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 never, I, I never revealed myself to you because you didn't receive my word. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and do with them, I will liken unto him, like him, liken him unto a wise man, which built his house, house upon a rock. A rock, right there. <clears throat> which built his house upon a rock, and the rock is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, now you notice in verse 23 it says, "I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity." So there's really the problem, and we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, Maybe take a, a brief diversion into this, uh, into, a, into what iniquity means here in just a second. And the Pergamian church age, Brother Adam said, and there it is, you can't claim that manifestation is the evidence of being spirit born, spirit filled. No, sir. I will admit that true manifestation is the evidence of the Holy Spirit doing mighty acts, but it is not the evidence of the individual being spirit filled, even though that individual has an abundance of those manifestations. Now, isn't that interesting that just because you come to church and shout and rejoice and run up and down the aisles, that, that, that's good, but that is not the evidence. The evidence is that you've received the word for your day and it's manifested in your life with acts following. What kind of acts? Virtue, temperance, knowledge, patience, the same kind of acts that were demonstrated in Jesus's life. Because when you believe, and it's bottled up on the inside you, sooner or later it's going to work itself out. And you're going to demonstrate those same acts of a believer. You're going to be in church and paying your tithes and doing what a believer does. Because a believer, if Christ is living on the inside of you, then it can't help but manifest. The evidence of receiving the Holy Ghost today is just the same as it was back in the day of our Lord. It is receiving the word of truth for the day in which you live. Jesus never did stress the importance of the works as he did the word. He knew that if the people got the word, the works would follow. If you get the word, the works are going to follow. So we don't, we don't major so much on, well, because, uh, uh, you know, the Pentecostal. The Pentecostal idea is let's force something to happen. But you get the word, and you don't have to force nothing to happen. All you got to do is relax and let it automatically happen like a lamb that eats, eats grass and boom, out, it all, all of a sudden out, out comes wool or a little dove that's just eating and eating what it's going to eat and, and it just naturally produces that oil out of its feathers, out of its skin and it doesn't have to force nothing to happen at all. It just automatically happens. So why would they not go on? Why would Judas not go on? And why would, why would Dathan and Kor and all those not go on? Why would that, that walk with, with Moses 
and saw the action, the pillar of fire and the manifestation of the signs and wonders and, and all of the things that Moses demonstrated, why would they not go on? Now, in Luke chapter 13, and I got my little diagram of body, spirit, and soul uh, of a person that's anointed and, and in church, but anointed with the baptism of the Holy Ghost on their spirit. But in Luke chapter 13, it says, Jesus said, Then said one unto him, that they were asking Jesus, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. There's many that come to church, but swinging incense in front of you doesn't save you. Confessing things to a priest doesn't save you. There's many come to church and they want to get in, but what gets you in is receiving the word for your day. When once the master of the house has risen up and has shut to the door and you begin to stand without and to knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer it and say unto you, I know not, I know you not whence ye are. I, I don't know where you come from. I don't, I don't recognize you. Then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence. We, we went to church. We were there. We, we, we felt the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Maybe, maybe somebody would say that. I sat in, the, I sat in Brother Branham's camp meet, or meetings, and, and I was there, and I saw the things moving, and I saw the presence of the Lord doing things. And thou hast taught in our streets, but he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. All you workers of iniquity. So the problem is iniquity. Iniquity. Now, iniquity is one of those words that uh, we, we don't use. You know, you don't. If, if, if you see something wrong in the grocery store when you're standing in the checkout line and you're looking at the magazines, you don't say, look at that iniquity. That's not a word that we use commonly. That's, but, but if you really, if you want to understand what the Bible's talking about and how he was bruised for our iniquities and, and he, he paid the price for our iniquity, you've got to understand. If you don't understand what iniquity is, then you won't get the sense the essence of what the Bible is about. Because you got to, to know that you're born in sin, shaping in iniquity, that you come that way, and you need something to pay the price for that iniquity. If you don't know what iniquity is, then you don't realize what, what situation you're in. And Brother Brown will say, iniquity, is, you know, I got this picture of a crossroads. You got a crossroads, and you got evil and good. You, you got, and every one of us are at the crossroads where we, we've got a choice laid before us, just like just like Adam and Eve, which way are you going to go? The choice was laying before Adam and Eve. Don't, don't eat from the tree of God, knowledge of good and evil. Don't, don't do what God says don't do. And they had that choice. Now, when Eve got to listening to the, to the beast, the, the devil speaking through the beast, she began to look at, maybe look at things in a different way and think maybe she had a little bit more understanding than her husband did. And, 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 and she had that choice presented to her and iniquity got to working. What is iniquity? To know, to know what to do and to go the other way. Now, now think about what a strange thing that is. To know what to do. If you know what to do and you know what's right and you won't do it, that seems like the confession of a madman. If you know what to do and you won't do it, but yet we were born that way. We come into the world because we're a product of that decision that Adam and Eve made. Adam knowingly, Eve deceived into it. And, and from, that, from that, uh, that decision that they made, everyone came forth from that, shaping that way, shaping in iniquity, to know what to do and to not do it. And you think of all the, all the decisions, all the, all the things that are placed in front of us, that, you know, uh, even this morning when you got up, you had a decision whether to come to church or not or, or to, you know, to, to, to just sit home with your, with maybe with your run, nose running or whatever and say, I'm not going to do it. You had, a, you had a decision. You have a decision whether to pay your tithes or not. And see, I, I, I use a lot of people get antsy when the preacher starts talking about paying tithes because they think, well, you're, you're pulling for money or, or whatnot. But, you know, paying tithes is uh, there's a blessing in Malachi 3, that if you pay tithes, he will rebuke the devourer. He'll rebuke the devourer. So that means when somebody, when the economy starts crashing or something, or, or you get laid off, then you can lay that before God and say, well, I, I did everything you said. I, I, and you can, you can, you can, you have something that you can, you can say, Lord, I've done everything that you require. Now, I, I, come on the scene and fight for me. Because you promised that you would rebuke the devourer. 
But if you're not paying your tithes, then see there's iniquity. Because you know what to do and you won't do it. Something that you actually know is right and you won't do it. <clears throat> now, so, so Brother Ram said, workers of iniquity, something that you know that you ought to do and will not do it. And the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia says, not an action, but the character of an action. So before, before you sin, before sin comes into the picture, there's iniquity. So let's picture you at that crossroads and you, before you take the first step, you got your foot up in the air, you're, you're thinking, I'm not, I'm not going to church. Or, or let's, let's do like, you know you need to be born again. And you think, I, I don't need to be born again. And before you take that step, there's iniquity. Because iniquity is what drives the action. Iniqui what is iniquity? Iniquity, is, a, is, is it comes from that, the, the Hebrew avon, which means crooked or bent, like an like a old man that's bent over or a road that's twisted. And so uh, iniquity is when you take the truth, the correct, the correct meaning of the thing, the correct actioning, and you twist it up so that it means something different. Now, isn't that what, isn't that what the, uh, the, the devil told Eve in the garden? He took the truth and twisted it up by just adding a little bit extra to it. You'll not surely die. You'll not surely die. And twisted it up, and, and then iniquity entered the picture, and it got, it twisted up all the action. It twisted up all, all every, everything from that point forward. Crookedness, perverseness, evil regarded as that which is not straight or upright. Moral distinction, to bend, make crooked, or pervert. Now, see, that's what Paul's talking about. These workers of iniquity, that, that the, the reason they didn't go forward was because there was iniquity in them. <clears throat> you think about uh, Jesus sitting there talking with Nicodemus at night, telling him, explaining to him, you need to be born again. Why would Nicodemus not keep going on? The last, next time we find is Nicodemus... Nicodemus there uh, at, at the cross helping take Jesus down off the cross, but he didn't wind up at Pentecost. Why would he not keep going on? And Brother Brown said, what is iniquity? It's something that you know that's right and you concede it and won't do it in your heart. When you know that that Bible teaches a certain thing and you won't do it, that's iniquity. And David said, if I hide iniquity in my heart, God will not even hear my prayer. Why would God hear a prayer of a man that knows he's supposed to do something? And down in his heart, he's like, yeah, I should have done that. But he won't confess it and make it right. But if you repent with a, a pure and a contrite heart and lay it out there before God, just lay it out there and admit your wrongs, that's the heart that God will forgive. But if you're holding in there, I, well, I know that I'm doing something wrong, but, but I'm not going to make it right. God won't hear, hear that. Brother Brown will say, iniquity is something that you go on out and you do it and you know you oughtn't to have done it. Now, now look, let's keep it in the context of what we're reading. Hebrews chapter 6. Taste of the good word of God and the powers of the world to come and if they shall fall away to renew them again under repentance. This is really the problem, the root of the problem. What is iniquity? Iniquity is something that you know that you're doing that you ought not to do and still won't repent of it. If I regard iniquity in my heart knowing that I should do it and don't do it, then God promised, the Bible promises, that God will not hear your prayer if you know you should do it and won't do it. What is iniquity? And I've just got all these quotes kind of strung together here. Iniquity is something that you know you ought not to do and you do it anyhow. Iniquity is something that you know that you ought to do and you won't do it. You know better, but won't do it. It's iniquity, see. You know they should stay with the word of God, but for the church's sake or somebody else's sake or something else, you'll stray from the word of God and do what the organization says. So there we got the sense of what iniquity is. When you won't do what the word says because of your pride, well, I can't do that because I might, I, I don't want to get born again because I don't want my parents to get credit for anything that I've done with my salvation. I don't want somebody to see me jump and shout. I, I don't want to preach the truth because my organization stands for it differently. 
or, or anything, anything that you put in front of the Word of God. So it, let's go to this next slide. Y'all like this. These are not quotes from Brother Brown. These are quotes from Brother Dale. This is what Brother Dale said. <laughs> Iniquity is the conceiving part of it. The baby is the product. The baby is what's brought forth. And we've already seen we were products of iniquity. The new birth took care of the iniquity for our soul, made a way for the body to be redeemed, but the body is not yet redeemed, is not redeemed yet. It's still a product of iniquity. And unless you're born again, unless you are a Christian, you are a totally a product of iniquity. Your soul is doomed for a devil's hell. So look now, you come born in sin, shaping in iniquity, you come the wrong way, and you need something to make your soul right. You need something to make your spirit right. You need something to make your body right. But God starts with your soul. <clears throat> and every man knows that he's got to be born again by the Spirit of God. This is what Brother Bram said. You've got to receive the Holy Ghost. So to go away from that and to turn back from it like Dathan or Korah or Judas did is iniquity. Because you know you need to be born again. That's everything just runs up into that it, it, uh, the umbrella of it, all of those things is that you've got to be born again because being born again is what takes care of the iniquity problem in your soul you're not even positioned to believe right if you don't have if you're not born again but when god enters into your soul then you start thinking right you start thinking looking at the scripture differently because now that iniquity problem is taken care of in your soul Look at what the Bible says about iniquity. In Job chapter 34, there is no darkness nor shadow of death where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. In Psalm chapter 14, have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge who eat up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. In Psalm 37, a Psalm of David, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Somebody that knows what the right path is to take, but they won't do it. The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors, but mischief is in their hearts because they know the right way to go, but they won't do it. In Luke chapter 13, he said, But he shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. And in 2 Thessalonians, Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now you know that with what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Now, what's the mystery of iniquity? Deception. You know it's, it's the devil working and starting off in a little baby form where eventually he winds up, well, there's, there's iniquity and maturity. But the iniquity, iniquity is deception. Iniquity is, is a lie, something to deceive you with, to make you do what you know, the opposite of what you know to do. Now, now look, let's just tie in Daniel 9, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish their transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. And to see the Jews need a, something, something, an antidote for their iniquity. And there's another quote from Brother Dale. When they see him incarnate, that proves that their iniquity is gone. <clears throat> In leadership, Brother Ram said, many of you think I got the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to heaven. That don't mean one thing that you're going to heaven. You can have the baptism of the Holy Ghost every hour in your life and still be lost and go to hell. How can that be? If you still got iniquity in your heart and you won't receive the word for your day, you won't do what God says for you to do. If you got iniquity and you know that you need to be baptized, but you won't do it, or you know that you need to be born again, it doesn't matter if you're baptized, baptized with the Holy Ghost in your spirit, on your flesh. It doesn't matter because down on the inside of your soul, the thing that drives your being, the thing that, 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 that drives the course of your life, there's something wrong. You look at this diagram of a, of a believer. On the left, there's a, I got a little, a little serpent down in the bottom of the, uh, uh, in, in, on the inside of the soul with, in the body and spirit, you could be anointed, 
but there's a there's something wrong on the inside but but when you receive the word for your age and it's quickened it lights up that that soul drives out the iniquity changes that heart so you're positioned to believe and you begin reading the bible differently but you you know god the 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 what god's trying i'm, I'm going to wrap up here in just a minute but god wants to take over all of your soul and your spirit and your body and that message the door to the heart he said you want him as a savior but what about him being your lord that'll control you control your emotions control your thinking control your every fiber of you that you could say like the man years ago who led him in for me to live is christ and to die is gain so brother Ram would say and the anointing ones at the end time he said what is iniquity it's something that you know you ought to do and you won't do it they know that word they hear it you're listening to this tape you're listening to this message that's that's a strong statement right there somebody be listening to the same message but yet have something something askew in their heart you see the lord god said so you see him confirm it make it true and you know this just as plain as the sun is shining outside but you that'll hold on to your denomination the musicians can go ahead and come forward Hold on to those false things, you worker of iniquity. Oh yeah, I did. I had great campaigns. I'd done this, I'd done that. Said, you depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Well, the Holy Ghost fell on me. I don't doubt that a bit. I spoke in tongues. I sang in the spirit. I don't doubt that a bit. No question of that. Oh, brother, sister, what kind of a condition? This is a trembling time. Where are we at? This word is coming to life now. God bless you, saints. Thank you.